Coming up, we look at just how affordable college could become for New York students. Now, from the EMC studio at Onondaga Community College, this is On TV Update. Good afternoon and welcome to On TV Update. This is Friday, February 24th. I'm Ashley Spinoza. And I'm Sam Prince. On January 3rd, 2017, Governor Cuomo unveiled a groundbreaking proposal to help relieve SUNY and CUNY students of financial burden of student loans. A program titled the Excelsior Scholarship calls for tuition-free college statewide, regardless of an, an, any individual socioeconomic status. The goal is to ensure that all students have access to quality education and a chance to succeed. Tuition, often the great barrier between receiving higher education or leaping straight into the workforce. But the newly proposed Excelsior scholarships may lift financial burdens for students who attend state colleges, like Kennedy D'Agostine. It's been a need for kind of more assistance. It's hard having to worry about if you're going to be able to afford lunch or afford the textbooks or afford, you know, to take a class that you might need to get your diploma and get a job. And I think if the Excelsior scholarship went through, that would just take a lot of weight off my shoulders. OCC's Director of Financial Aid, Rebecca Rose, tells us just what this means to both staff members and students. I am just thrilled about this proposal because we are an institution that um, welcomes as many students who wants to come and learn here. And we do understand that there is financial barriers for students, so this proposal is just allowing students to enroll, allowing students to engage in higher education, whereas they wouldn't be before. And we are just so thrilled that this opportunity may come for our students who, who really couldn't obtain a higher education because of finances. If the Excelsior Scholarship passes, students will be able to use funded money towards items in the bookstore, like textbooks or even pens and pencils. We hope that this means that we have more students joining our campus and more students uh, leaving uh, our campus with low debt levels and uh, a great education that they came here for. This initiative is set to take effect in fall 2017 in a three-year phase to eliminate college expenses for students across New York State. For more information about the Excelsior Scholarship, visit governor.ny.gov. With the ongoing attacks of the media by Donald Trump, Gallup has found that Americans' trust in the media to report the news fully, accurately, and fairly has reached its lowest level in polling history. The numbers have been taking a steady dive over the years, but they really took a deep dive when Donald Trump took office. Throughout the campaign, Trump's presence on Twitter enlarged and Trump was able to relay his message while avoiding questions from the media. On Monday, February 27th, there will be a Black History Month presentation to be held on the Onondaga campus. The presentation will be focused on the histories of race and disability and undoing the legacies of exclusion and marginalization. The presentation will be by Dr. Beth Ferry, who is a professor of teaching and leadership at Syracuse University. You can see this presentation at Mawinney Hall in room 345 from 1110 to 1220. There's a buzz going around campus about a group of math and science students who have attracted the attention of NASA. OCC has their own NASA team. No, they aren't traveling to space anytime soon, but their mission is just as important. We had to design and build a, uh, a microgravity anchor that can actually land on a, uh, a celestial body with microgravity, so basically an asteroid. This what I'm holding is a prototype, a model and it's what our NASA team is currently working on. It's a mission that day and two dozen other schools were specifically selected for, and it's key to NASA's future plans. In the mid-2020s 20, uh, to 2030s, what NASA would actually like to do is they would like to land on a comet or an asteroid. Um, and what it allows them to do is make sure that their, um, their spacecraft will be tethered enough that it won't end up floating away. The team's faculty mentor, Dr. Fred Jaquin, it's confident that his team's mission will be a success. Everybody on the team is pretty smart, and they're real motivated. And I don't really have to push them. I kind of have to channel them so that we're all going in the same direction. One of those directions is community outreach. We give a presentation to either college students or high school students, or even we have some scheduled for uh, senior citizens, different things like that, telling them kind of 
back up big picture, why is, why are small bodies in the solar system important? For the OCC NASA team, their big picture will come into field view in May. That's when they'll be headed to Houston to present their project to NASA. To keep up with the NASA team's progress, follow them on Instagram at OCCMichaelG.next. Coming up next, Austin Sweeney gives us a full forecast. Also, he takes a look at how OCC deals with school closings and delays due to weather. Stay tuned for On TV Update. With classes and homework taking up so much time of your day, it's hard to find time. You have a check you need to deposit and can't because the bank is closed. Relax! At AmeriQ Credit Union, located on the campus of Onondaga Community College, we offer many on-campus services. Like check deposits on the go with your smartphone. Just take a picture of the check and deposit it on your phone. And big blue kiosks which allow you to bank 24-7. You can make deposits, withdrawals, and even print mini statements. And best of all, we offer no fee accounts. Whatever your banking needs are, AmeriQ is here for you. Coulter Library is currently under construction. But don't worry, we're still here to help you for all your study and research needs. We're expanding our study spaces by adding four more rooms and spreading our books out over three floors, making it easier for you to find exactly what you need. We're updating our library classroom to give you the tools and technology you need to get ahead. From helping you to that next assignment to giving you a place for lifelong learning. Call, stop by, or visit us anytime at library.sunyocc.edu. Explore, discover, transform at Coulter Library. I wish there was something to do. Explore art. Discover culture and transform your perspective at the gallery. If you're living in a dorm, a delicious restaurant cooked meal may seem like a dream, but here on campus, it can be a reality. Come to the student-run bistro where you can eat delicious food and support the students who prepare it. If you'd like to improve your culinary skills, you can sign up for the class next semester and be a part of the most delicious dining experience on campus. Treat yourself to a great meal while helping your fellow students move toward their future. Come to the bistro in Gordon today. It's fall, it'll start getting colder. I can't get to the mall, and I need to get some warmer clothes to wear. Where can I go? The bookstore? Yes, you found it, the bookstore. The bookstore has a wide array and more. Onondaga merchandise from hats to sweatshirts and sweatpants, the bookstore has you covered. So if you thought you'd only find school supplies and books, look again. Keep warm this fall and show your school spirit. Stop in at the atrium in the Whitney Building or order online at onondagacc.bncollege.com. Welcome back to On TV Update. Now we turn things to Austin Sweeney, who is going to fill us in on the weather. Austin, how are the things looking? Well, guys, today we have a high of 68 and low of 56, mostly cloudy and a thunderstorm later. Looking at our five-day forecast, on Saturday, the rain continues with a high of 61, low of 28, with another possible thunderstorm. Sunday, a little colder with a high of 37 and low of 30 with snow showers. Monday is looking a bit better than Sunday with a high of 46 and low of 31, partly sunny. On Tuesday, the rain comes back with a high of 46 and low of 40. Finally, we have Wednesday with a high of 52 and low of 35 with mild rain. A few weeks ago, we had the first snow day and delay of the year, and OCC has a whole plan dedicated to shutting down the campus due to the weather. Central New York is well known for having severe weather during the winter, and because of that, schools are bound to get affected. Central New York weather is very, very unpredictable. It might be uh, a whiteout where you are, and it might be sunny here. There is a lot that goes into a delay or cancellation due to weather, and Dave Wall isn't the only one who calls the shots. Each of us has a different role. So uh, Jen Paddock from facilities, uh, they're responsible for plowing and icing, uh, de-icing, I should say, salting the roadways and sidewalks. So he's looking at the condition of the campus itself. Amy Kremenick uh, is responsible for communications, so it's her folks that will actually notify the local media if we close. Fortunately, we haven't had too much snow this winter, so the plows have been inactive, but it is central New York after all, so they have to be ready for anything. Get uh, other dist school districts that are close to us, or churches, or libraries, 
where they've made the decision to close, that also just helps us and in, helps inform that decision. Although, in the end, we're really focusing on conditions that are on our campus. We want to make sure students, staff, and faculty can arrive and leave safely. Students that commute to college also need to be in mind when calling a cancellation, as it might be too bad to go to school. If the if I can see, like at least sixty percent of the pavement on the ground, I'll go to school. But if I like can't see it, or if I see like a lot of slush on the ground, then I'll just generally avoid it. It's very important to make sure that students and faculty make their own decisions on whether or not to go to school. And if they think that they would be safer at home, then they should stay there. After all, it is Central New York, and it is very unpredictable. We might not get any more snow days for the year, but that doesn't mean that campus safety and others get to relax, as no one can be sure what the weather is going to be like. Back to you guys. Thank you, Austin. Coming up after the break, we have your On TV sports update. Michael Aldridge takes a look at student athletes from Onondaga Community College and what it takes for them to achieve success both athletically and academically. You may have walked by Coulter Library and seen that we're under construction, but we're still going strong. We have over 200 computers, 10 study rooms, and a 24-hour chat service where you can speak directly to a librarian. Our vast and diverse research collection will meet your academic needs. And here at Coulter, you'll find social gatherings and events to help you connect with the community. Experience Coulter Library today. Need a break from the same cafe food every day? Quit the assembly line and head over to the Bistro, a live restaurant ran by students in the hospitality program who cook you food to order and serve it restaurant style. Come make reservations at the Bistro today. I think the remodeling gives it a good look. Um, it also um, provides more open space for the students. Also, it uplifts the school in, in some kind of way to me, kind of when I see how the format of the remodeling looks. It, it makes it look more pleasing, appealing. So that's what I like about the remodeling of the school. Compared to what I've seen the last two semesters, it's, it's really come um, a long way and it looks really great. I try and give them a little bit of an idea of what it's like to work as a designer. Hopefully the thing, the main thing they get is the work ethic. That it is a lot of work. It's one, you know, art is one of the hardest things to survive in. You know, you have to have the work ethic and hopefully they get an appreciation for that and uh, as well as the information, you know, the um, art and design and things like that. Try and prepare them for what's out there. I think that we're really lucky to be able to serve the community like this. There's a lot of people that work really hard to support our program in the college and in the community. And I'm really grateful because I feel really lucky that I can be here and train people who really want to do this job. And they go out and I see them all over the place and they're all out there taking care of people and that's wonderful. We know you can succeed and we want you to succeed. Welcome back to On TV Update. Many student athletes at Onondaga Community College are getting ready to compete, and over 46 of them have achieved academic honors. Many athletes give it their all to score the points they need to win during a tough matchup. But for many others like student athletes, scoring high grades is just as important as scoring during the game. OCC lacrosse coach Chuck Wilbur understands the need for both academic success as well as athletic success. So lacrosse is going to be over within four years, but the reason why they're coming here is to get their degree and do well academically. So obviously the grades are going to help these get, kids get opportunities at the next level going to a four-year college and you know, obviously hopefully build a career uh, they could, you know, do what they want to do the rest of their lives to make a good living. Over 46 student athletes at Onondaga Community College have earned academic honors this past semester. One of those academic honor students, Jake Anderson, shares what it took to both study hard and play hard. Just made sure I managed my time well, you know, did my schoolwork and everything worked out good. Once you figure out the time management, everything goes well and, you know. Jake hopes his success in the classroom and his skill in lacrosse will help push him forward. Uh, hopefully, 
you know, hopefully this year win a national championship, then transfer out. I'm looking to go to Cortland next year and then further my education there. Student athletes have more than one challenge to tackle. They're responsible for keeping the numbers high both in the classroom and on the field. With the rest of the semester at OCC and a long lacrosse season ahead, athletes like Jake will have to give it their all to succeed. The OCC Honors Program requires a minimum GPA of 3.5, giving aspiring students a reason to stay on the ball. If you want to know more about the Onondaga Community College Honors Program or the OCC lacrosse team, then visit the OCC website at sunyocc.edu. Now we're going to take a look at how Onondaga Community College men's basketball team picked up a win over the Finger Lakes Lakers, winning 78-67. The Lasers struck a comeback after the Lakers held the lead early on in the game. The Lasers ended up leading the first half 44-33. The, <coughs> the Lakers fought back diligently in the second half, but were shut out when the Lasers were able to land 11 more points and take the game. Players like Tyler Sullivan really drove things home. Tyler himself scored 20 points, while Nate Cutler was able to score 15. You know, I think it's really interesting that it really only takes two solid players to turn the game around like that. You know what? It definitely does. One player can take you far. Two players can take you really far. Just look at Michael Jordan. Until he got Scottie Pippen, they didn't win a championship. Coming up, we have one more. Coming up, we have one more look at your weekend forecast with Walter Sweeney. A little rain may be on the way. Also, a star athlete chose to come to Central New York despite original plans to go to a rival. Next on TV Update. Library is good, but now they're building it. It's almost done, and uh, it's good. There's, you can use computers, you can use books over there. So uh, it's good like to spend your time if you don't have class. You can do your homework. And in the learning center, over here is good too. They try to teach you a lot of things. They understand where you come from, and um, they help you. The best part about OCC is just having that one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with your professors that really help you out with tests, homework, it helps a lot. At the tutoring center, helps a lot. For this semester, I had to take some physics, and one tutor helped me out a lot with that class. I would recommend OCC to people that really want a good environment to go to with smaller class sizes and have just the experience to go forward in college. I originally came from Northern Virginia. I feel as if OCC has welcomed me into the community with open arms. I went by um, the Gordon Building to meet with the staff at the front desk so they can help me. The um, main thing they did was help me transfer my credit, you know, help me get settled in. They also set me up with someone to take me around the campus. A lot of the buildings are close together, whereas in Virginia, you needed a car to get from one end to another. One of the very valuable mandates of the community college is that it draws the student population from the entire community and sees its real goal to embrace the diversity that's in the community and make sure that that's evident in the classroom. The characteristics of community college is diversity in academic background. Usually there's quite a lot of diversity. One of my favorite parts of teaching at a community college is that diversity. My classes have a nice balance between doing your own work as an individual and working in groups. I find that most of my classmates are here to learn and it makes it a nice balance when doing group projects. One of my favorite classes was uh, web design and it definitely opened up my eyes to what I can potentially do with that, that career. I think my classes overall are quite enjoyable. Uh, a lot of them pertain to what I'm actually wanting to learn. But overall I, I love it. You can really learn some great things here. Welcome back to On TV Update. One local basketball player came to a Syracuse area college this year despite plans to go elsewhere. On TV Update's Ben Behe gives us a look at the Lemoyne star player. You may have heard of Lemoyne College before, but if you look into the women's basketball team, one of Section 3's best stars plays there. I like playing with the team a lot. I think there's a lot of girls on the team that we all play well together. It's a quiet day at Lemoyne College's Henniger Athletic Center, but Liz Millay, a star basketball player from Cooperstown, has other plans. Playing basketball with and against friends she has known for a while. I know some of the girls on the other team. It, was, it wasn't awkward, really. I said hi, stuff like that. I mean, I'm used to playing against people I know from high school, too, so it wasn't too weird. 
One of those persons Liz is referring to is Michaela Roberts. Roberts played at Cicero North Syracuse High School and was another one of Section 3's best. When she heard that Malay was coming to Lemoyne, she was ready to play with her. I was really excited. Liz is a really talented player, and I was really excited to get to play with her. What's crazy about all this? They could have been playing against each other instead of being teammates. Liz originally committed to Adelphi University and later changed her mind. Since both Lemoyne and Adelphi are in the same conference, instead of Malay and Roberts being rivals, they are teammates. Coach Gina Castelli believes this will be a great opportunity for Liz Malay to improve during her four years here at Lemoyne College. The future is really bright for her, and she's definitely, you know, first sub off the bench. Um, she's had some really big games for us, so she's she's definitely going to do a great job for us. But Malay doesn't just have plans to play basketball at Lemoyne; she is also thinking about academics. Right now I'm a business major, so I've kind of changed it up a little bit, but we'll see where I go. From Lemoyne College in Syracuse, Ben Vahey on TV Update. Malaya dreams to one day become a dentist and is hoping to be a strong leader for the Lady Dolphins these next four seasons. To learn more about the Lemoyne women's basketball team and see Liz's profile, visit LemoyneDolphins.com. Austin is back with us. So, Austin. How's the weather looking this weekend? Well, guys, it doesn't look like it's going to be that great out. It's probably going to be one to just stay inside most of the time. This weekend is going to be a lot warmer, but don't get too excited just yet, as today we're looking at a high of 56 and a low of 52 with 50-50 chance of rain and possible thunderstorm. Saturday is a bit warmer, almost hitting 60 degrees with a high of 58 and low of 27, partly cloudy with rain that day and a f uh, flurry later in the night. Finally, we have Sunday with a high of 34 and low of 21, mostly cloudy and little snow later that night. You know, I got to tell you, I'm pretty disappointed to hear that we're going to have some more snow. I was loving that warm 60 degree weather. I could roll my window down, blast some music and just cruise. Absolutely. I, I was so looking forward to wearing just a t-shirt that day. It, it, the coat is so restrictive, you know, you would just want to be open, you know. Mike, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, not much. Probably just working. That's it? You're not, not going to check on any games? Oh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, maybe a few, yeah. Well, de definitely this weekend, with the snow coming, I'm going to pull out the snowmobile and have a go at it. <laughs> Thank well, you for joining us today for On TV Updates. We'll be back next week for another show. Until then, stay updated.